back in the dino room here. We've had a little time to work on the project that mm -hmm. we started uh, a few months ago. And we've, here at Shavers, we've been busy with all the, the month of money engines, whatever, getting stuff done. But we finally actually got the last test motor together and we've got results on it. Yeah, and they're pretty freaking cool. <laughs> I can't, I well, can't deny it, right? You know, we the numbers this. are huge. We, we knew this. You yeah. know, we, we've done enough testing right mm -hmm. now, not with the mule motor, or whatever. We finally got a, to test a, you know, a good seventy thousand dollar real car race motor, motor, real R race, real motor. race motor. You know, some of the things that we talked about last time, as far as some of the changes that we were doing. Now, when you're building one of these engines, the you know, clearances are, are a key. They're they're really a key, and so we went a little farther than we normally would mm -hmm. on the engine. When I say farther, I mean, we tighten the piston up just a little bit on yeah. these motors. And, you know, we've slowly been working our way to the point where we kind of know how far we can go yep. without that piston sticking in the bore. Right. Now, if the guys mess up on the timing a little bit or the fuel, it, we, we can't really help that. But the most interesting things that we found, and again, this is not, it's not, it wasn't a mistake. I mean, we've proved this a number of times already. One of the things that we tried to do with the mule motor mm -hmm. is, you know, we measured the blow by. That, that was a really good test, yep. but we haven't done it on a dry stump motor yet. On a dry stump motor, we're not looking at blow by, we're looking at the amount of crankcase vacuum that we have. On the motors that we put together, we try to maintain crankcase vacuum throughout the entire R RPM range. Sometimes that's kind of hard to do. Well, especially on an aluminum block engine, right? Um, that, aluminum people block that engine. have been doing this for a while already know. An aluminum block engine versus an iron block engine, they're going to behave differently in terms of the amount of vacuum that you can exactly. create. Exactly. And the reason for that, as most everybody knows, is on the aluminum engine, it's expanding and contracting so much and it's moving. It's, it's not quite as stable as a steel block is. So we have to deal with that. We can only go so far as far as getting the bores in perfect shape for the ring package that you guys came up with mm -hmm. and the clearances that we wanted and the finish, the bore finish was also very important, which a lot of you guys are paying attention to that now. You know that we've got some very some new equipment that's used in testing the actual finish itself. Well, it's a package, right? Absolutely. The whole goal of this was if we put together this package with a deeper RVK on the surface so we can hold more oil, but then we also change the coatings with mm -hmm. the rings mm -hmm. and make sure we had that gas ported top ring with the new dual layer coating. We put all that together, right surface finish, a little bit tighter piston to wall clearance. How to much- To keep the pistons more stable. Right, right. We want to try to- The whole package, the yeah, whole package. Exactly. And by putting all that together, three inches more vacuum. The That's same nuts. motor, the same test, the only difference being what we just talked about, clearances, the coatings on the rings, mm -hmm. the whole package was worth an average all the way through up the RPM range of about, about three inches of vacuum. Yeah, it was that, like is, that was huge. When we can maintain, you know, seven or eight inches of vacuum at 8,000 RPM, we score at that point because at 8,000 RPM, that block's just moving all over the place. I remember in the days when people said, you can't pull vacuum in a sprint car engine. That's used to be I, the case. I, I remember that was the days. Like, the like case. oh, it'll pull some vacuum at idle, but once you lay the throttle to it, it's over. Yeah. It can't happen. That's why we used to have these breathers that were about that big so to, to let the engine vent while it was running. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now this thing's pulling as much vacuum at you know 9,000 RPM on one of these sprint car engines today that what a cup car used to run with an iron block 20 years exactly. ago. Exactly, which is fairly amazing considering, you know, considering the constraints that we have. It was more than I had thought it was going to be. The difference was a little bit more. We gotta, again, thank Brad Legman. He, you know, he really helped us out on the, on the finish and the exact bore sizes that we need. I gave him some specifications, minus zero, plus two tenths, and literally his bores were closer than that. Well, that and that's the key thing, yeah, right? Because yeah. it's better to have Brad adjust, we'll call it the bore size, yeah. to get the piston to wall clearance exactly. versus trying to get the pistons, you know, yeah. and like you said, Brad nailed it on the size and the finish. When you look at the profilometer results Which from we have those, those surfaces, we've got those right? Out. The consistency of those valleys and just how uniform that surface is is amazing. So not only was it just you know we used to have valley, to, we used to have to guess on that, and now we don't have to because no. we could actually see it on the computer. Absolutely, we're not using an average. Which when you look at the numbers on the profilometer, 
you know, we've done some engines before that had the right numbers, yeah. but they didn't run as good as this one. Right. Mainly because we didn't have the piston to wall clearance right, and we didn't have that uniformity. That average was okay, yeah. but what happens is if you got one or two giant holes, but a bunch of small ones, it doesn't work the same no. as uniform right. across the board. And that's what we're seeing, right? Is that the combination of the rings, the hone, and the clearances, huge difference in the vacuum. And because of that, you actually saw a change in power. Even when you guys are trying to detune the engines to make sure that the engine can manage the tires, you still saw a top end power gain just because the vacuum so much so better. So in, in this is when I showed you the graph, even though we've changed the power curve on this motor on purpose from the last time we ran it. And we've been doing that for the last two years on this Ford to try to get different packages together uh, for when we can release this thing. Right. You know, people want more our top our van, whatever. So we've changed this one a little bit. And because we've taken a little bit, we've softened the engine up. Mm -hmm. Because we've done that and the top end power from 75 on up is actually greater, that strictly coincides with the, the change in the vacuum. That means the ring package is functioning correctly. Yeah, that, that higher RPM, when there's less cylinder pressure to keep the ring sealed against the yeah. ring groove, yeah. that increased vacuum is keeping the ring sealed. Yeah. Because it's not just the ring against the cylinder wall that's sealing it, it's the ring against the ring groove of the, the piston. The ring lands, yeah. Right, that's the, where it actually has to seal the most. Yep. So it's here and it's there, and this package did both, right? It, 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 better it, it seal here, yep. better seal there, which yielded more power, you know, I get excited about a lot of stuff, but this one <laughs> is super well, cool. Well, you know, we've done, we've been, you know, testing stuff together for so long. It's rare that we come up with a, a new idea that works out as well as, as it does. Now, you know, there's been some trial and error stuff. You're not going to hit everything the first time, but because of what we've learned in that trial and error stuff, this one really worked. What was really fun is to actually see, like you were kind of saying, that we started off with the mule engine, doing these same kind of things to it. And then we also did all the work at Southwest Research, testing the coatings and the different surface finishes. And how we took all of that learning and put it together in a real, in a, in a real 900 race horsepower race motor. Yeah. And you see it do the same thing, you're like, now that's cool. It, it's not it, theory. It, it just worked, it's real. And, it, and it put a smile on both of our faces. You oh, know, yeah. from, from from your standpoint, you know, the Total Steel guys are doing a great job. And and of course, you know, we're learning on, especially on the new project, the new Ford project. We're learning as we go here. Absolutely. And when you try as hard as we've tried on both companies, and you have results like this, it just kind of gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling inside, Lake. <laughs> for us. For, for all the motorheads, anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the dino rats like us. Right. Right. That's our trophy right there. Exactly. exactly. That's <laughs> That's all we need, yeah. Exactly. So, hey, if you like stuff like this, hit that subscribe button, because you're not gonna get rid of us. We're gonna come back. We're gonna have more stuff, because we're not even close to being done yet. Yep.